Hello, everyone. The work I'm presenting here was conducted by my PhD student, Akash Gupta, and the research is focused on automatic generation of model parameters for simulating cardiovascular physiology. So most of you have seen lumped parameter network, LPN, and these are essentially circuit models that represent the cardiovascular system. And the LPN basically works this way where you have a, a circuit architecture and then you prescribe parameter values to these components as inputs. And then when you execute this model, it produces waveforms that are your outputs. And the LPN has been applied to do many different things. Uh, people have tried to investigate surgical planning, medical device design, testing, or use it for education. And so the typical use of the LPN, you have your circuit architecture, and you would tune these, the parameters in the circuit, to describe some kind of baseline target physiology that you're interested in investigating. And then if you're doing something like, for example, surgical planning, then you would, from the baseline, you would make some perturbation in your model to describe the surgical procedure and then see what the uh, result physiology looks like. And so our research is uh, looking at this step here. And the question is, how do you come up with these baseline parameters? And this research was initially motivated from just talking with different researchers from both industry and academia. And a lot of people have expressed to me that they're interested in using LPN for their research, but that they don't know how to tune these parameters. And that's a barrier to entry. And so here's just an example, the list of parameters that we have for one of the simulations that, that we used. And uh, it's, it's not trivial to be able to tune these correctly. And so previously in different studies that take different approaches to, for tuning. And so a lot of studies basically use values directly from this paper Snyder write out published in 1969. And this paper was, the parameters were tuned based on one single subject. And so basically we have a lot of studies that are looking at one patient specific case. A second approach for tuning is you basically, you can manually tune them. And this is the approach that my group and collaborators have used a lot in the past. This works pretty well except it just takes a lot of expertise and a lot of time. So it often would take a grad student over a week to just be able to tune one case if they know what they're doing. Another approach is that people have used open loop models to essentially narrow down the parameter search space and make it feasible to implement automated tuning with some kind of optimization process. And then another approach is just to limit the number of output targets that you're trying to match. And so that also makes the tuning easier that you can automate. So given the current landscape of what's out there, and, and this is now the goal of our research, is we want to be able to provide a protocol that can automatically generate a full set of LPM parameters that are ready to use. And we want these parameters to be able to create simulations that will match common clinical target hemodynamics. And, and these are clinical parameters that you would typically get in a clinical report. These are uh, easy to acquire, they're non-invasive. And so typically when you have clinical data, you usually have uh, these values. And so we want to be able to, to match these and uh, everything else that we might not have in clinical data, we want the rest of the values to be within normal clinical range and have realistic waveforms. So here's the solution that we worked out. So we start with one set of just fixed reference parameters, and we tune the parameters by separating them into four different categories. The first category are your atrial and valve parameters, and these work well without much tuning. So we basically hold them constant at their reference values. The second category of parameters are your systemic resistances and capacitances. We can calculate the total vascular resistance, the systemic and the pulmonary vascular resistance using our target hemodynamic values. Once we calculate the total resistance, we just scale all the resistance accordingly. And then we will scale the capacitances based on the resistance scaling. The third category of parameters are your ventricular parameters and your large vessel parameters. And these are a lot more complicated. And so we ended up training a deep learning neural network to generate these and the way that we trained the network was we first constructed a large set of LPM parameters. So these are full set of parameters, uh, but we use sampling algorithm to generate these sets of parameters with different values of category three inputs. And so combinations of category three inputs. Um, and we 
use these full sets of LPN parameters to actually run the LPN and get the resulting simulation results. And so all of this data together, we use to train basically an inverse model uh, of a deep learning neural network to be able to generate these category three parameters. And then the last category are your ventricular reference volumes. And we calculated these with some equations. The variables in equations are produced of the neural network. And then some variables are the target hemodynamic parameters. And so here's a summary of how everything comes together. Uh, it's, it's somewhat complicated, so I won't spend too much time going into details here. So let's look at some results. This is the process that we use to validate the performance of our protocol. We first generated 500 sets of target hemodynamic parameters that are realistic. And we use these with our protocol to generate 500 sets of the LPM parameters. And then we fed these parameters into the actual LPM circuit to run the model. And then we get the simulated hemodynamics. And we basically compared the simulated with the target to see how close they are. And we were actually quite pleased with the result. So in these plots you're seeing on the x-axis are the target parameters and the y-axis are the simulated parameters. Um, so here's our aortic pressure, systolic, mean, diastolic, uh, very close. Cardiac output, also very good. Diastolic, right ventricular volume, and diastolic, left ventricular volume. So we're all the targets that we tried to hit, we were able to hit those uh, pretty accurately. The right atrial pressure, left atrial pressure, pulmonary artery, mean pressure, systolic pressure. And so all of these pretty much fall within clinically normal ranges. We also wanted to make sure that the waveforms are realistic. So I'm going to show two example cases here. So here we have the left ventricular PV loop, ventricular aortic pressures, and the flow through the valve. So aortic valve, mitral valve, and then uh, on the bottom row here, uh, similar data on the right side. And so all of these waveforms were realistic. So we were happy about that. So we also looked at a smaller subject to make sure that the waveforms are still realistic there. And so here's results for the smaller subject and also looks pretty good. To summarize this research, the protocol that I just presented addresses a current need in LPN usage. So if you have a scenario that you would like to simulate with some target hemodynamic parameters, this protocol will automatically generate a full set of LPN input parameters to be able to reproduce that. The limitation is that we are only confident that this protocol will work well within the range that we test this. We have a ready to use software that will execute the entire pipeline that I just presented that you can download here. So here are some references and I would like to acknowledge collaborators and funding sources. Thank you for your time and your attention.